Hi there. My name is Sun God. By now, you've probably spent enough time along the beaches of Ark that you're itching to do a lot more. But to take on increasingly dangerous regions and creatures requires a whole new level of effort and risk. Thankfully, there are some great tools and weapons that can help. In this video, I'll cover some of the essential guns and gear you're going to need to up your Ark mid-game. So let's get into it. What exactly does mid-game mean? To me, it begins when you start using a smithy to craft your best gear and metal tools. And it ends when you craft your first tech replicator. That's roughly speaking, from levels 20 to 100-ish. It's not exactly a scientific definition. In the mid-game, you are coming into your own, building better bases, taming tougher dinos, mastering the skies and deep oceans, and exploring the map. Let's get into the tools you're going to need to build your dream base. The trusty metal pick. This will be your workhorse tool. You'll use it a lot to harvest thatch, flint, and metal. And if you relentlessly level up your melee skill, boy will it ever deliver the goods for you. Once you tame them, the ankylosaur and trike can take over the heavy lifting from the pick. The metal hatchet is indispensable when it comes to harvesting wood and stone. It's also good for carving raw meat off of dinos and fish meat off of water creatures like coelacanths and megalodons. Taming specialist dinos like the dodicarus, therizinosaur, and carno will help reduce your reliance on the metal hatchet. A little higher up the tool hierarchy is the sickle, first available at level 30. This specialty tool is fantastic at harvesting fiber, rare flowers, and raw prime fish meat. You won't use it as much as the other two, but it's crucial enough you'll always want to keep it with you wherever you go. Specialist dinos like the dire bear, ichthyornis, and anki can eventually replace the metal sickle. The spyglass is crucial to helping you survey distant areas around you and can also be used to scout dinos. If you zoom in on a dino, you can see its gender, which can be helpful during taming. If your flyer gets stranded in the air, you can use the spyglass to get it back by zooming in on the flyer and whistling for it to follow you. If you're not satisfied with the vanilla spyglass, there are modded spyglasses that offer a lot more functionality. While really an early game weapon available at level 8, the wood club still has good uses in your mid game, and that's primarily to knock out dinos and your human enemies without killing them. A great way to capture a pteranodon for taming is to first trap it with a bulla and then knock it out with the club. It saves you the hassle of chasing it around and the club will do far less damage than shrink arrows. Your first serious melee weapon will be the pike, craftable at level 25. This two-handed standoff weapon will help keep a bit of distance between you and your enemy and can be used while running. However, it can't be thrown like a spear and requires using both weapons at all times, so you can't use it with a shield. At level 30, you can craft a sword, which is lighter than a pike and does a lot more damage. It's one of your most effective tools for collecting organic polymer from dinos like the Mantis, Hesperornis, and the Kairuku. I suggest that as soon as you can craft a sword, stop carrying around the spear and pike. You'll save the weight and this does a lot more damage. The bola is more of a taming aid than it is a weapon, allowing you to immobilize dinos for up to 30 seconds and giving you a chance to knock out or tranquilize your tame. But act fast, because once it frees itself, it's going to be pretty upset and will probably be coming after you. Once you get to level 25, craft a crossbow and stop carrying around your bow. The crossbow has better versatility as it offers better power and accuracy, and it's also able to fire underwater. It's able to use all your existing arrows from your bow, so you don't need to craft all new projectiles for it. You're most likely to use the standard and tranquilizer arrows, so if you're going for a faster dino kill or trank, always aim for the head, as hits there cause 2.5 times normal damage and help trank faster when taming. Ask any old timer how the Mesozoic was won, and they'll spin you tall tales of the six shooter. Available at level 34 and craftable at a smithy, you'll need 60 metal ingots, 5 wood, and 15 hides. In the hands of a gunslinger with a steely eye and quick fingers, this great equalizer will make fast work of up to six hostile adversaries. 
Next is the fabricated pistol, available at level 55. With a 13 round advanced bullet magazine, it experiences no weapon sway or damage fall off. You can also mount a flashlight on it, making it handy for caves and unexpected nighttime encounters. These qualities make it a great insurance policy for the moments you find yourself in a tight spot. It may not do much against the big dinos, but it can help give you a fighting chance to escape. Now let's get into long guns. These long barrel firearms provide both greater range and power. The long neck rifle will become your workhorse weapon at level 35. It will transform how you fight and tame. This single shot weapon can take simple rifle ammo, narcotic and shocking tranquilizer darts. And it can be used on foot and from land and flying Dano's saddleback. But it can't be used underwater. Be advised that reload times are long, so it's best to engage your targets from a defensible spot from a distance. When you get tired of aiming using the long neck's iron sights, the scope attachment will be your salvation. Providing three power magnification, it won't make your rifle more accurate, but it will help you draw a better beat on your target. Taking a standing scope shot introduces swaying and hurts your aim, so instead try crouching first and then aim. One downside of the scope is that you can't use it when taming with tranquilizer darts, so be prepared to get up close and personal with your taming targets. Ah, the double-barreled shotgun. Using simple shotgun ammo and available at level 39, it's best suited for short-range engagements in tight spaces like caves. Unlike pistols and rifles, its blast can hit multiple targets at short range and be devastating. But the further out the targets are, the less damage they'll take due to a wider pellet spread. Your first truly modern weapon will be the Assault Rifle. Craftable at a fabricator at level 58, it has steep resource requirements. Using a heavy 40 round advanced rifle bullet magazine, this beast has a high fire rate and doles out a lot of damage very quickly. A downside of this weapon is its heavy recoil that can hurt accuracy, but eating shadow steak saute can reduce that by 80% for three minutes. The evolution of the long neck's the fabricated sniper rifle. While it does about two thirds the damage of the long neck, it can fire eight rounds before reloading. And because it comes with a built-in scope, you can still add an attachment like a flashlight, laser, or silencer. It has some disadvantages compared to the assault rifle though. It's two and a half times heavier and its ammo is twice as heavy. It has one third the fire rate and long four second reload times. Its crafting requirements are also extremely high. If you want to dominate a battlefield from a distance, this is your go-to weapon. Crafted from tough dino exoskeletons and other organic materials, chitin armor provides one and a half times better physical protection than hide armor and can be crafted at a smithy at level 37. It is pretty weak at providing protection against the elements, however. It's a poor performer in cold weather, and in hot weather, wearing chitin armor will make you hotter. While it's better than nothing, you'll want to carefully consider when and where to don it, as this is definitely not an armor for all seasons. Black armor is the epitome of self-protection in the ARC mid-game. The ease of collecting the required materials and ability to craft it at a smithy at level 56 makes it probably the most common armor seen on players in the game. It provides twice the physical and cold protection that chitin armor does, and its performance against hot weather is better, but still not great. A full set is heavier than chitin, however, so you want to slightly increase your own weight allowance as well as that of any tame dinos that'll be carrying you while you're wearing it. When you hit level 98, you'll be able to craft riot armor with a fabricator. While the resource requirements are pretty steep, and it being a third heavier than flak armor, riot armor provides some advantages that its predecessors don't. It provides a bit more physical protection, the same cold protection, and about third more heat protection than flak. A big advantage it offers is protection against topor attacks from dinos like the Paki, Thorny Dragon, and electric prods carried by your human enemies. However, it doesn't provide any protection against poison and attacks from the likes of the Pulmonoscorpius, so you'll still need to tread carefully. In addition to body armor, you can also craft handheld shields. On the lowest tier is the wood shield, available at level 12. It provides the same amount of protection as a full set of chitin armor and weighs about 30% more than a full set of hide armor. It can be equipped along with a pick, hatchet, or sword, but it can't be used in water. 
The next step up is the metal shield, weighing 30% more than a full set of flak armor, but provides over twice the protection than flak does. If you plan to carry this beast, be sure to improve your weight allowance, as it is heavy. The Riot Shield is the ultimate tier of handheld protection in the mid-game, giving it almost twice the protection of its metal progenitor at about two-thirds of the weight. This is a resource-intensive creation that doesn't become available until level 92 and requires a fabricator to make. You'll have to dig deep to assemble it, but it'll give you four times the protection that an entire suit of Riot gear will provide. When you need to operate at colder latitudes and higher altitudes, fur clothing is your best solution. While technically considered armor in the game, let's get real, it's not armor. Even though it does give protection approaching that of chitin armor, nobody in their right mind would willingly wear it into a fight. What it does excel at is cold protection, providing nearly the best of any mid-game clothing. It's craftable at level 23 with a smithy, but you'll need to grind to get the 320 pelt to make a full set. These are best acquired from the likes of the Castoroides, Mammoth, and Ovis. The ghillie suit is designed to give you camouflage so you're harder to see by dinos and humans alike. It reduces the range at which an enemy can see you by half, and it also provides superior protection against hot weather. Its effectiveness against cold weather is only slightly better than cloth armor though, so this is best used in temperate and hot climates. These can be made at level 33, provided you can come up with the required organic polymer. Scuba gear is essential to exploring the deep seas of the Ark. It's completely useless as armor, but it will grant you the outstanding ability to breathe underwater for up to 30 minutes. The flippers let you swim two and a half times faster than normal, but make you walk slower on land, so take them off when you leave the water. The mask lets you see more clearly underwater, but your peripheral vision is pretty restricted by it, so be sure to look around occasionally for predators. Scuba gear provides the best cold protection of any mid-game gear but only in the water. Whenever I do one of these videos, I am constantly amazed at how crazy complicated Ark really is and how much there is to craft in this game. And that's just in the mid-game. It's really mind-boggling. Did I leave out one of your favorite pieces of mid-game kit? Let me know in the comments. I've got a lot more planned for this mid-game series that gets into dinos, bases, and a lot more, so stay tuned. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Until next time, thanks for watching, take care.